And good afternoon. Welcome back to AM 1410 WRMN in Elgin. Boy, it's one of those afternoons where I could have just sat here and turned on the microphone. We could have just picked up right where we left off. Welcome to the Laura Dion Jones Show. You guys want to lose weight fast? Get rich quick. Do you want to look young forever? If you do, just look at Laura Dion Jones. She's going to tell us how to. She's on here every Wednesday afternoon. Laura, you look great today as always. Thank you. I got my jeans on again. Yeah, you're happy about those jeans. Oh, I'm delirious. I got to know, do you ever take them off now? Is it the same pair of jeans (laughs) five days a week? Only to wash them. (laughs) No, I only wear them. I wear them here. I wear them when I go out dinner or something like that. You know, I still do the tights and mini thing for when I work out. Yeah? You know, good, I mean, good. I'm not going to part with those tights. And and there's only 11 more shopping days uh, until Christmas, so that's plenty of time for y'all to get uh, a diva presents. <laughs> <laughs> Where shall I leave my Christmas You've present You've got list? everything. I do have everything, yes. don't I? Thank you for saying that. Laura, might I add that we have downstairs our redemption center. Have you ever been to the redemption center? <laughs> We have the Redemption Center yeah. downstairs. Mm-hmm. We've decorated the windows for Christmas. There's a chimney. Around the chimney is, is, is Christmas stockings. Mm-hmm. Guess who has a stocking downstairs on our chimney? Who? Laura Dion Jones oh, does. Yes, that. you have a stocking down there. Is there room to fill it with anything? There's something in it for you. Oh, no way. Yeah. I have it down there on my I'm way home. I'm telling you, you're nice. part of our family, just Thank so you know. Thank you. I hope so. 109 uh, uh, episodes. Yeah. You're part of the family. Thank you. <sighs> yes. Get out while you can. Sounds like something Jack Nicholson would say. (laughs) Listen, can we talk a minute about Alec Baldwin's American Airlines mishap? Because I'm not sure if I sympathize with it or not. Or about the Saturday Night Live appearance, which was so fun. Which wasn't his idea. It was. It was. Uh, whose was it? It was the anchor. Because he got some Seth heat from Myers. American Airlines for that. Idea. Yeah, he yeah, got some but, heat. But well, Baldwin stepped right in. He didn't need any encouragement. Oh, I know. But it, it was it, the idea came from Seth Myers to be uh, thinking what performer. If, if Bethany Frankel calls you and says, "Let's do a show," you're not going to say no, even if you disagree with her. If you will. So this was perfect for him to do that. I just need to work that in there. What did I miss? Oh, I, oh Alec Baldwin got thrown off, of, not thrown off, but kind of thrown off an American Airlines flight because he wouldn't turn his uh, iPad or something off because he, no, he was playing word words game. with yeah, friends. Oh, I love that And game. he had the chance to score big or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And so he, I don't know all the particulars, but they escorted him off. And it's just this whole big thing. And. You know, I don't know he what to make even. of it. He got even. They're now up in bankruptcy. <laughs> he got even. I think it was their own karma that brought them their yeah. bankruptcy. But then he, then he appeared as a uh, Steve Rogers pilot on Saturday Night Live during the news segment. Really? And he says, oh, really? uh, yeah. you got to like Alec Baldwin. He's like an institution. He's an American institution. So he was he was praising. <laughs> he was playing the opposite role. It was delightful. Wow. Delightful. Yeah, got, no, it was. Got plenty of press. And, and American Airlines got negative press from their bankruptcy recently. This is at least wonderful press. So but you know what? Go they, with it, they have rules. And did I ever tell you the time I was thrown off a flight? Uh, yes, and it was quite charming. Right. <laughs> we responded no. to a pilot episode. <laughs> Your next radio show. Uh, no, Valerie was, didn't hear it. Oh, well, uh, yeah, you didn't? You. Deb Allen, our esteemed guest, didn't hear it. All Laura, right. I have a question for you. Sure. Have you ever been thrown off an airline? <laughs> yes, if so, as a matter of fact. What did you man. do? And I put a curse on it was ATA, and look what happened to ATA. <laughs> Rest my case. And that's, I do great. that's better than Alec Baldwin? I do terrific curses. <laughs> As she's wringing her hands together. Yeah, terrific I'm curses. Evil. You know? <laughs> so, quickly? Yes. I travel with two Italian greyhounds. They're miniature greyhounds. One's 8 pounds, one's 12 pounds. Lucky and ginger. Um, a couple of the, one of the senior flight attendants on ATA was, had a kind of in for me because I was pals with a lot of the other flight attendants. And we were sitting in, and this was when I was 317 pounds, let I, me add, and I dressed, looked, you know, you could see on my website, I mean, I always looked perfect. I looked fabulous for being a big fat woman. Mm-hmm. Anyway, this woman was very jealous of me, and she always gave me crap. Okay. Uh, thank you. I mean, thank you. Come how on. You I see your hand good? hovering over that. A button. regular flyer? How, how did you know her? Because at the time, we, we had our home in, on Fort Myers oh, Beach, so what we, we still home. have, but it was a different time in everyone's life and in everyone's economy, and we went there six, seven, and eight times a year. We'd go for a month, come home for a month, be, wow. okay, back and forth. So ATA, they the had days, the cheap weren't air. Weren't they the days? So <laughs> yes, come on. Were. This was January 1st, uh, January before 9-11. Before that, September. Okay, mm-hmm. so it wasn't as stringent mm-hmm. as it is now. They still had the magnetometers and the security, but nothing like it is now. Mm-hmm. So we were sitting, minding our own business. Uh, the flight was late, and she comes strolling in with the rest of her crew, and she says to me, you're the one with the Italian greyhounds. Oh, yeah? And and uh, some of the other girls knew me, and they liked the dogs. Anyway, they had a rule that only one dog could be in one cabin section per flight. 
Okay. Because they didn't want the dogs fighting. So Jeff comes with his dog. I sit with my dog. They're underneath the seats. They're cook creating the disturbance. You know my dogs. My dogs eat off of my fork. My dogs sleep in bed with me. Come on. They're not going to be scrapping with some other, somebody else's dog. Of course not. So this 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 woman, this flight attendant, had her shorts in a big twist. And so we sat down, and the next thing I knew, she was telling us we couldn't sit together. And so we exchanged words. I mean, Diva was not a line, and I'd have to look back in my notes because I did keep a journal because it got really ugly. And she went to the pilot, and she stamped her foot, and she was the senior stew. She was the union steward. Okay. So now she can pitch a B.I., yeah, yeah, you know what, <laughs> about two dogs sitting next to each other underneath the seats in the same cabin zone. So because it was environmentally unsafe. I mean, she pulled every trick in the book she could pull. They're going to fight. They're this, they're that. I mean, she was brutal. So finally, I refused. I absolutely flatly refused. So you know what she did? She refused to fly. Because she was the senior, the plane wouldn't t- couldn't take off till they got another senior, which could take two to three hours to get another senior flight attendant in. Wow. This was ugly. Yeah, it sounds ugly. So they escorted us off. I was mortified. They ended up giving us a bunch of free flights, one thing and another. But the media wouldn't do anything about it. Now, mind you, this was before 911. I didn't go to the lengths that Alec did. Right, I was just right. flying with my two dogs. And everybody always, you know, it was she was so by the book. Now, here's the funny thing. Another friend of mine is, was a senior, senior uh, flight attendant with American Airlines. Mm-hmm. I mean, not American. Trans, ATA. ATA. ATA, okay. They're going. And what she did was is she sent me, she tore the pages out of her flight manual, and it's called a recurrent. And every few months, they have to do what is called a recurrent. And they go get the, the newest rules and regulations that have been updated. Uh-huh. So Miss Senior, who was stamping her foot, didn't get the newest one that said it was okay for two dogs to fly oh. in the same zone. So, I mean, it was an ugly thing, and I got thrown off, and wow. I know it's, it was just awful. Great story, though. Was, yeah, it was. Was there any compromise available? No. You couldn't put the dogs on opposite sides of the aisle? or No, she wanted totally separate, one in the front, one in the back. It wasn't like within the next ten rows or one row in front and one row in back. And, I mean, people would – I mean, let's not go there. Yeah. Wow. Anyway, David was thrown off a plane. So. There you go. Now, let me ask you, this. if you weighed 317, isn't that the time frame where that's almost we're going to buy, you're going to have to buy two seats? No, no because, because I squeezed myself into a seat. Now, here, for those people who are very overweight and they are very, very, very large, mm-hmm. what you do is you get a window seat because then you got about an extra this much room. The window seat, because mm-hmm. then you can pick up eight your, inches. She's showing sure. up. She's showing eight inches. Is that eight inches? Yeah. On the radio, it oh, is. Yeah. At least, you, you at least. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So uh-huh. the trick is, if you're really heavy, get a window, window seat beside okay. the seatbelt extender. But anyway, yeah, yeah. you asked. Since you gave up smoking, you that's asked. Good to know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and let me ask you one quick thing, because time's <laughs> been away from us. You know how much Diva packs in, uh, these in are 57 good stories, minutes. Though, yeah. I, I mean, I should look back in my journal. I, may, I probably should write an article about it because it was just so nasty what she did. Laura and the three dogs. That's right. Uh, is our government going too far by calling for a ban on all cell phone usage while driving, question mark? Even hands-free. What was the question? Is our government going too far by calling for a ban on all cell phone use while driving, even hands-free? There's a lot of big I think they are. Mm-hmm. Really? I think you should be able to use hands-free. I oh do not goodness. think you should be able to text. Oh, right. my goodness. And I want to tell you something else that makes me nuts. Video players in minivans. That makes me nuts. Talk about a driving distraction. Can you imagine trying to drive down the road and your kid's got some God knows what blaring? And the, and I've seen the ones where the, the screen is right here, so it would be in the driver's vision. You know what I'm saying? Why can't kids just read a good old-fashioned book? One with actual paper pages. That makes those trips much easier, though. And just like your dogs are comfortable on the plane. And what else is our government going to go, well, go too far with? Well, you, you want them to eliminate the video thing. That's almost like you're saying, I want this because I do this. And I don't want anybody to watch video. So you're going both ways on this one. Yes. I don't I watch videos video. in my car. <laughs> well, so many people do, though. It's obvious. Uh, well, your idea. Do you ever go, are you ever traveling in the left-hand lane and uh, you're in rush hour and traffic's moving along and all of a sudden the car in front of you has got like... Seven, eight, nine, ten car links in front of them, and you're doing 20 miles an hour. Mm-hmm. So you go to pass them, and sure enough, they're texting because you can see that glow. That's really and you scary. just again walked into why we don't want to do it. So though. nuts. Yeah. Well, I don't think talking on a cell phone is comparable to texting. Yeah, texting thank you. Is tough. I mean, thank I you. think distracted driving is distracted driving. It, it is tough because you know when you I tell you, when you're, you're talking on a cell phone, you say. 
thank you, goodbye, your mind goes, I've just completed something. You almost want to stop the car. It's almost a continuation. Something just ended. You, you're not. You're not full. Well, but who you, takes? Who takes? Who makes really thoughtful phone calls while oh they're yeah. driving? You're mostly checking in with home. Oh you're gosh. saying I'm on my way to do. You're this. a busy lady now, my dear. The, the drive. Floyd Brown told me best. For years, he hated to have a phone in his car. Then he couldn't live without it. He did all his business on his drive to WGN Studios. He was taking intricate, detailed phone See, calls. See, I can't do that. He because he was trying. Okay, yeah, we'll shoot that next Tuesday. I'm like, hi, I'll be that, there in 10 minutes. The only reason you shouldn't that's use the it. phone. You shouldn't yeah. use the phone to say, you should say, Mom, I'll be home in a while, but what are you going to do? Hey, I'll stop by Meyer before I get home. You can save that call. You don't have to make a call like that. So, sure, many folks are really detailed with their calls. This is a debatable topic. We could fill up yeah. an hour at least. With well, this let's topic move along. right along here. And we will save this for another show. It's okay. a topic for the morning man. You're right. It yes. is. Stopping by Dunkin Let me know Donuts when you're going to do it so I can fact, call in. We have touched on this already with the new Miss Illinois. She, her platform is distracted driving. Yeah, yeah. No way. Oh. We've already had this. A lot wow. of fake yeah. The CBS well, News. Well, someone who today. can tell us about government, local government, is Deborah Allen. She's a Kane County board member and a representative of District 17 and that be our district right here. So stay tuned right where you are and don't touch that radio dial because in the studio with us today are Mike Hunziger, my great guy pal, loyal sidekick and trusty board man, and Jeff Myers, my very wonderful co-host, making a dollar sign no, there. No, yes, I have an yes. <laughs> no, is it, it Meyer? Right. You, no, you said it right. I was just making sure Debbie knew. It'll come up. I thought it was like Fort Myers, Florida. <laughs> Jeff Myers, Florida. It is. It is. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And of course, what would our show be without our very favorite YouTube camera girl, none other than a Valerie the Swan? <laughs> Please stick around because you've got a whole lot of interesting talking lined up for you today. You're listening to the Laura Dion Jones Show on WRMN, 1410 AM. And meanwhile, back at the WRMN Ranch, we, today's show is brought to you again by... I want to tell you there, you have perfect posture. It's Dr. Claire Leas. You know, her office is conveniently... She's chiropractic care. You know that. Chiro- I don't have to tell you that again. And we'll have an Exhibit A in just a moment. It's uh, Dr. Claire is right at 2001 Larkin Avenue. You can call her at 847-888-9988. We can talk quite a bit, Deb, but all we have to do is show the posture right here on camera and for the minds I had home for the WRMN audience. And the there. YouTube audience. And the YouTube, yes. Right there it is. Perfect posture, courtesy of Dr. Claire Oleas. We rest our case on that. Thank you, Dr. Claire. And we'd also like to thank Snobhounds.com, a canine clothing company, Think Nike meets Donna Karen, but for canines, Snob Hounds is true environmental protection wear. And we'd also like to thank Casey Tool, an automotive specialty tool company, available through your Snap-on mobile tool distributor. And a very special thank you to Casey for making this show and all of our other shows possible. And it's time for Laura's Motivational Minute with our quote of the week. What do you do on the radio when you have to burp? (laughs) Uh, you keep it quiet. Try to keep it quiet. <laughs> you just you turn off the microphone. I don't know. <laughs> some some studios have cough switch. Sometimes oh, show me where the cough switch is. Yeah. Send it to Jeff Myers for a moment. He can he can cover any dead air. Okay. I'm good with burps. Okay, our quote from the week. Who said, "It takes courage to push yourself to places that you have never been before, to test your limits, to break through barriers." And the day came when the risk it took to remain tight inside the bud was more painful than the risk it took to blossom. Wow, I got this one. John Glenn. You know, when you <laughs> open, that's not a February bad one. 20th, 1962. Sure. He orbits the earth. He's, he's right inside the bud. It all works. <laughs> Anybody else? Uh, Henry Ford. My Aeneas Nin. Who? Aeneas Nin. Is that how you Denver pronounce Nugget the name? Denver Nugget Center. Hey, no, that's, that's right. That's right. He is a Denver Nugget Center. How do I spell that name? Aeneas Nin. Aeneas Nin. Take the risk. <laughs> Bra- okay, my 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 motivational article in Boca Jump this week. Oh my God! Why is your face so red? Oh, good. Is called "Take the Risk: Break Through Your BS," and it's not that difficult to lose a great deal of weight. We all know that. I never suffered, and I still don't. When I lost my 130 pounds in two and a half years. This is what a lot of people don't get. It's not that difficult to shed your unhealthy, unwanted, excess poundage, poundage, and then learn to keep it off once and for all. But you have to be on the right diet and fitness plan for you. 
And it's not the same old, same old because it's easy, nor the same old, same old because your doctor says so. If it isn't working and you're giving it your all, it's just not working. So find an alternative. You have to find another doctor. You have to find a different diet you can live with till your weight's off and then follow it forever. This is one of the crucial keys. This is one of the secrets to true and everlasting weight loss. It's well worth the risk it takes to finally break through your old BS and gain control of your entire being beginning with food and serious daily cardio for life. What barriers do you have to break through in order to pop out of that tight, painful bud you're stuck in and blossom into a healthier, more fit you in the coming new year? Test your limits. Come commit to get fit and join my Commit to Get Fit, Elgin's Biggest Loser 7. Class begins on Wednesday, um, January 4th, and location to be announced. Uh, and please go to elgin.bocajump.com and look for my articles on uh, uh, the blogs. Look for the rest of my motivational article. And speaking of someone testing her limits, I think this gal has an, doesn't doesn't have an easy peasy job. But let's give a warm LDJ welcome to Deborah Allen, Kane County board member and representing District 17. And it's a pretty good chunk of Elgin, I think. And we're in it. And um, for anybody who wants to know what district they're in, look at Kane County's website. Welcome, Deborah. Thank you so much. What a pleasure to be here. It's very so fun to I have you. I think in the previous segment you laid government on my shoulders, so I'm not sure that that's entirely <laughs> fair. But. Well, you're the only one in this room, though, that's really in government, there so you to go. speak. Sure. Um, anyway, a few weeks ago, Illinois State Senator Chris Lawson was a guest on the Laura Dion Jones Show. Yeah. And he's running for Kane County Board Chairman. Yes. And now here you are. And even though Senator Lawson is a, a Republican, um, I want to ask you if you would like to see him elected to Kane County's board as president. Um, what I think most of us on the board are looking for is somebody who will be fair and somebody who is educable, if is willing to listen to both sides, all sides of an argument before mm-hmm. reaching a decision. Um, it's fine to come in with an agenda. You need to have ideas about what you want to do, but you sure. also need to listen to the other guy. You need to see what else is in there in the mix that you should take into consideration. So someone who's fair and someone who's willing to listen, and then it'd be really great to have somebody who doesn't take names. It'd be nice to have <coughs> people who are... Um, keep score, who yeah, don't keep score. Like. Yeah. Um, Steve Rauschenberger once said to me that the difference for him in... Uh, State in state government was that you could go toe to toe with Governor Jim Edgar, and it was up to you. It was up to the other guy to try and win hearts and minds and get the most votes. But at the end of that, if you lost, then fine, you go on to the next issue. And with George Ryan as governor, if you crossed him, if you if you didn't get Don't along, if tell you, me. Then then you went on the list and you would never get cooperation. You would the door would not be open to you, and that's that's a problem in any government. Sure, it's a problem in any organization. Exactly. Sure. So if um, if Chris is the guy, and he may very well be, who is willing to to be fair and to listen and to uh, and stay open throughout his time, I think he'll have a, a much easier job of it. He has many. Uh, many he's, gifts. He does, doesn't he? He's, he's he, and 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 he's somebody who is enough of a enough of a magnet or a, what a, a lightning rod. Uh-huh. Enough of a lightning rod that he's certainly going to have people who've disagreed with him over the years. And I think one of the things, though, that he has always said is, "Look, we're always going to have things we disagree about, but we can find things where we do agree. Mm-hmm. We can be fair. We can uh, agree to uh, keep our word." We can agree to return phone calls. Mm-hmm. There are lots of things there where we can keep and the bridges. And agree to work for the people, well, number one. Well, how about that? You can, you can agree to uh, try and be a good public servant, and, and uh, that will get you past a lot of the differences in opinion that you've got. I think I'm too emotional to be a public servant. Oh, well, emotion is good. Passion is good. I have, I'm too emotional, aren't I? Too it's emotional just, to it's just that when you lose, then you go on to the next thing. When you win, you don't flaunt it. Oh, yeah. I'm not a flaunter. No, oh, no of course no. not. Of course oh, not. come <laughs> on. Right. Who mentioned his appearance no. in Contagion 87,000 times? Uh, <laughs> only by the populace. David Ham did. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Give us a little bit of information on your background. 
I want to say one more thing about Chris, oh, if that's yes, okay. Yes, please, yes. One of the things that, one of the problems with local government is that it's a lot like the bad parts of high school. Um, you get the gossip mills going, you get the rumor mills going, and the fact is that you try and, you know, we're adults now, we're professional now, we shouldn't get into that, but it somehow it enters the mix and you just have to look past it. And there are people who have made the criticism that, that Chris is not a, a guy who plays well with others. And then I say to myself, well, you know, who did he have, who was who was there to play with? Yeah. If you're trying to, if you're trying to make things work in George Ryan's government, I, I don't think you can. If you're trying to make things work in Blagojevich's government, I'm not sure you can. One of the nice things you know about the county and about, about the city government is that it's close enough to home that it's, that you can Actually, you can learn enough, you can lobby your colleagues, you can lobby your friends, you can talk to your constituents, and you can make a difference. I don't know how to fix Springfield. I don't know how to fix Washington, D.C. But They're too it's, big. It's nice to have some, some uh, venues mm -hmm. that are here where you actually can make a difference, and the things that are important to your constituents, to, to your neighbors, are things that you can try and make happen. I think that that's what drives you, is that you can make a difference, Well, I think from what I can see. I think we all try. I think you get into it because you hope that you're going to be able to make lives a little bit better for the people sure. who are your neighbors. I do I do what I do because I feel exactly. I can help make a difference in people's lives, especially with their weight and fitness, especially with the mortality rate, the obesity epidemic, insurance costs that people are going to be paying monthly now if they're overweight. Um you know, things like that. This is the Laura Dion Jones Show on WRMN, 1410 AM from Elgin, Illinois. I'm Laura Dion Jones, and we are on the air with um, Kane County Board Member Deborah Allen. How are you? Again. <laughs> so tell us, so give us a little bit about your background now that we got Chris, uh, Chris, uh, Chris out of the way. Right, this is Chris's hour, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm just always grateful to run into the pure hearts in this business. And the pure hearts are the people who are not there to make money and not to drive an agenda of their own and, and are just working for the people. You hope, it or you hope they're all pure hearts. Well, yeah. Don't sure, you? Sure, sure. I'm an optimist. You're an optimist, mm -hmm. and we do. Mm -hmm. And then when you run into the others. You just can't try to keep going. Um, my background is that I grew up in Sycamore, so I'm a, I'm a farm girl. No kidding. Um, my dad farmed with my grandfather until he said to my grandfather, I didn't survive World War II and graduate from college to nurse car cows, so I'm not going to do that anymore. And that was the end of the cows on our farm. But my grandfather continued to farm, and my dad went, into, uh, went to work for Barbara Green. My mom was a teacher, and she was a teacher when most people most moms were stay-at-home wow. moms, uh -huh. and so that was a really cool advantage to have parents who were so um, vested and interested and and um, and, and supportive. Put on, yeah, and it put me on my own a little bit because there were you know concerts and things that they couldn't that one one or the other couldn't make, but you know uh -huh. it was okay. It was worth. We were all doing things that were worthwhile, and I um, went to college at Northwestern, and I um, had always enjoyed music, but I didn't expect it to be a career. And then it turned out that I was pretty good at playing harp, which is a <gasps> reasonably rare thing. So I really got... Um, I, you I got, have a harp? I do. Oh. I do. I, I got, I got uh, benefits that I truly wasn't entitled to because it's a rare instrument, and I just was at the school at a time when they didn't have many harpists. So I got to do more things sooner, faster, and harder. And then um, when I went to work... Um, I got to, I, I went to work more in the pop field than in the orchestral field. Okay. And part of that is because if you want to be an orchestral harpist, you have to follow the jobs around the country as people die or retire. Oh. And I really didn't want to do that, so mm -hmm. I went into showbiz. Okay. And so I spent about 20 years being the the sleazy bar harpist at Hyatt Hotels. Listen to her. Wow. <laughs> sleazy bar harpist? I don't Harp think I've ever That's heard an oxymoron. Yeah. Sleazy and harpist. put all those three words together. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> that no, totally is an oxymoron. <laughs> makes, it a lot, makes it a lot more interesting, though, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, sure I mean, does. It does. Did you and wear mini skirts and stuff, or what? No, I was, I was in long dresses <laughs> and okay. the whole thing. Well, but. I mean, you know. <laughs> and, and, then, and the thing is, though, is that, that, that kind of, you work a lot of evenings and weekends and holidays, and that masks a bad marriage, which I happen to have. So then when I got divorced and met the love of my life, I said to myself, why am I working nights and weekends and holidays? We have a family now. So I was lucky that he was an attorney and he wanted to have his own office, so I became his office manager and phased out 
harping, and um, um, we have we spent about 30 years in Schaumburg uh, with the office, and then moved it into our home here in Elgin, which is just dynamite. God, if you get a chance to work out of your home, I've worked out of my home for many many years. It's like it God is. bless you. It's just it's a, I, I'm sure I'll get struck by lightning because it's such a happy thing. But neck wood. Do we have real wood here tonight? Well, we oh. certainly have mine. <laughs> so um, the so so we we were work out of our office, and he had run. He had run for judge a couple of times here in King County. So we kind of learned what it was like to be involved in the political circles. And um, uh, an opening came up on the county board, and he said, I'll help you do this if you're willing to. And I said, well, I think you should probably do it. You're the one who's been politically interested. And he said, no, nah. I said, uh, I have my career going, but why don't you try this? And, and I, I ran and won. So that's how you got involved with the Kane County government. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. A mixed blessing, but it's really it's really interesting to be as old. I, I got on the board, what, when I was 52, I think. So it's kind of interesting to be that old and have something new in your life. How long have you been on the board? Not that we want to do any math to oh, figure out how old okay. you are. <laughs> I'm 62. I'm in my 10th year. 10th year on the yeah. board. Cool. And the, the system is set up that you have... Uh, every 10 years, redistricting occurs. Everyone has been bored to tears or has been invigorated by the redistricting struggles. Okay. And so um, um, it, you, you basically have uh, two four-year terms and a two-year term or a two-year term and two four-year terms, and that's done with a flip of a coin. And it just happens that now I've done 10 years, or I will have done. This, this is, is my Is there a limit? Year. You can keep running? Uh, yes, you can keep Good. running as long as you're invigorated and... Passionate and what what kind what exactly does a Kane County board member do? The Kane County board's job is to spend the money, so the budget is probably the most important thing that we do, and to set policy. And there are many departments in Kane County government, and they are they are managed every day by staff that is there doing that. Mm -hmm. And we really don't have to do with the day to day things. So if you run into something that should be tweaked or should be improved, then you should go and try and do that. Mm -hmm. But the staff is there running the government on a daily basis, and we are the people who – things are run through a committee system. So uh, an, an issue or resolution to change, uh, the next thing that needs to be done goes to a committee, is vetted there, is turned in, over to the executive committee, and then is voted on by the full board. Hmm. So it's a system that allows for lots of checks and balances and lots of input. It's just, it's what you make of it. If you have people who are there with willing hearts and willing to do the work, then you're going to get a lot done. Um, and, and, and sometimes it doesn't work out quite so well, but that's what government I think I get the impression Chris Lawson's kind of pure of heart, and I'm hoping that if he gets in, he's all the things that we say and hope he is. Yeah. Um, and just like that, it's halftime, so hold those thoughts. We'll be right back in a moment to dish about some current topics that have piqued our interest, and we hope yours too. So stay tuned because you're listening to The Laura Dion Jones Show. <laughs> 